yeah that's looking pretty good like that and i'm liking that like that and uh, yeah this is a whole lot better like uh oh hi everyone and welcome back to not another bonsai channel wow what a day it's been today rearranging everything sorting everything out and big changes have happened here at not another bonsai channel so uh the table is clear of of all those trees i mean we have a few we have the zelkova and the dawn redwood and a couple of other plants i haven't yet revealed on the channel but they will be coming soon but um where have all the plants gone well they've gone onto the shelves and um well i had to order some more shelves because as you might remember i had a black stand just over here with all of my trees and plants and things on there and also had a stand just over here well actually i had tables a couple of tables that were originally indoor tables that i bought outside because we didn't want them anymore and anyway the wind and the rain and everything else kind of caused them to deteriorate and they're just looking a little bit shabby so what i had to do is i went out and i bought two new bamboo plant stands and uh, today is a beautiful day and I've, I've had to build them they came flat pack and had to build them put them together and i've put one just over here and this has all of my different trees on here uh, we have the tree from jason you also have a um a, a japanese maple you have the china doll hawthorn and many many others on that one and then over on this side you have uh, the tanuki challenge a hazel paracantha and many others uh, you have the um some red maples a lemon and a whole bunch of other trees on that one so it's looking far better than what it did and um uh, it's just uh, going to allow the trees just to do their thing, uh, receive the light. It's going to be a whole lot better really monitoring them and uh, watering them. It's, it's, it's just going to make the whole situation a whole lot better. And considering those old stands were deteriorating, this is a far better setup. But there's something else. Now, you've seen me many times on this channel work on miniature trees, but you've never seen me work on a big tree. And I've been doing just that up the garden. So let's go take a look. Right, so up this uh, wild part of the garden, if we just get under this uh, branch here, this here was the Japanese full cypress. Well, it still is, but uh, as you might have seen in a short video that I put out a few weeks ago, this was a great big mass of foliage. And what I've done today is trim back all of these branches and just try to make it look a lot more like a tree. Now, uh, Many people talk about their carnage piles when they do heavy pruning to their bonsai trees, but have you ever seen anything that looks like this? So a whole lot of foliage has come off of this tree. I mean, this pile must be easily six, maybe seven feet high, a whole lot of foliage. So I had to do a lot of hard pruning to this tree. I had to cut some branches right back to the trunk. I had to cut some branches back so they're only two feet long, all in the name of allowing shoots and buds to open up, develop, and create finer branching on the end. Uh, of course, you can't wire a, a branch like this, or certainly like this, but you can use the clip and grow technique to prune back a tree like this, and just ultimately get it looking a whole lot more like a tree. But it did leave me with an interesting proposition because some of these branches are curving out and then going straight up in the typical cedar manner i mean this is a japanese full cypress as i say and many of these branches were coming out from down low on the trunk but they were coming out and then they were going up now when you have branches that are going straight up i was thinking what about an air layer so these two upright branches i thought would make fantastic air layer candidates and uh, we can see i had to cut a branch off of there but i thought maybe just above just in here we might be able to put an air layer there and that has a very interesting set of branches up top so that'd be a really cool uh, tree if i can get that to take and then that one just at the back we have a branch coming off quite low down i'm thinking maybe doing the la down here or maybe up there somewhere and again you have quite interesting branching going on up top you have quite a thick branch coming off there but you have some interesting branching going on even further up top so yeah they could become very interesting trees if i can get those air layers to take well, I'm not going to do the air layers tonight because I'm filming this in the evening and uh, I don't have all the right equipment at, at the minute, but I will get that together this evening and we will do these air layer projects tomorrow. Now, 
you won't have to wait too long because it's going to come up in the next few seconds. But for me, this is all going to happen in the morning. Well, it's a little bit windy, but I've come back the following day and I'm all prepared. Now to do this job, you are going to need a few things. So we're going to need a spray bottle just to keep the air layers nice and moist when we come to apply the sphagnum moss, which I have here just in a, a bag. It's, it's dried moss, so we will need to keep it nice and moist before we attach to the air layer. Also have some uh, bin bags cut into uh, strips, which we can wrap around the air layers. It always is a good idea to have a, a black plastic as opposed to a clear, just because this absorbs the heat a bit better and encourages root development. Also, a pair of gloves is always a good thing. Keep your hands nice and protected. A pair of scissors, some string, some rooting hormone, a brush. I'm just going to use a toothbrush here just to apply the rooting hormone to the branches. Of course, we need a knife to cut the bark away. And a Sharpie pen just to mark in where we want our, our lines to be. Hello, Chess. Are you going to help us today? Are you going to help us? Uh, so with this trunk here, I hope to put the air layer somewhere in here. So what I always like to do is just with a Sharpie pen, just make a mark where you want your top line and where you want your bottom line and then put a cross in the middle. And then that just gives you a good indication as to where you want your air layer point to be or the area that you're going to cut out. Because if you don't do that and then you move away from the tree and then you come back, you might forget where you want to do your air layer. So by just marking it with a Sharpie pen, you always have a clear idea as to where you want your, your cut point to be. Then it's just simply a case of carving a groove, go around the trunk, uh, on around, well, around the trunk following my top line, all the way around. And the reason why you do this is just to ensure that you get a nice sharp edge along that top edge. So when you come to carve away the middle section, you have a nice sharp top edge and you really want to push this nice and deep you can't go too deep when you do this go nice and deep right and that's that's gone around my top line i do the same around my bottom line all the way around all the way around it's a little bit windy today so i hope the camera isn't moving around too much and of course i am halfway up a tree so um there might be a little bit of interference and I'm, I'm sorry about that if the camera's bobbing around a little bit but I hope you can see what I'm doing so I'm just carving a groove in the top line and the bottom line and then all I'm going to do now is just carve away the middle section with the knife removing all of the bark until I get to the, the wooden side and I do that all the way around this middle section and you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this so I've cut a nice neat line along the top and along the bottom and then all I've done is carved away all of the bark uh, from the middle. Now what will happen is roots should come from this top section here. So in many ways we could care less about this bottom bit because all we're worried about is this top section. So really what we want to do is create a nice neat edge along this top edge because this is where the roots are going to come out of. Uh, so let's put this to the test. So what you would do is just with your spray bottle, just spray the top edge like so, just make it nice and wet. And then use your, your toothbrush in this case, dab it into your rooting hormone, get a nice amount onto your brush, and then it should stick quite nicely to that top edge. And then you just go all the way around, all the way around that top edge making sure that you coat it thoroughly. Again, you can care less about the bottom bit. It's mainly this top section that will callus and eventually form the roots for you. And so just make sure you're very, very liberal with this. Put as much on as you can get. And then just really, really coat that top edge with as much rooting hormone as you can get on there. Right, so now back down on ground level, <laughs> this is where your sphagnum moss now comes in. So. The easiest way to do this is to take one of your sheets of plastic. Now this is just a bin bag that's been cut into strips. And you do that and then you put a bit of sphagnum in the middle, coat it in water, so spray it with your spray bottle, make sure it's thoroughly wet. 
Now, of course, you could soak the moss in a bucket of water first, but I often find that if you do that, it makes it too, it's, it's sopping wet and it's too hard to manage and handle. But some people do that and it, it works fine. But for me, I prefer to just do this, spread it with some water, make sure it's nice and damp, and then spread it around a little bit. Make sure that it's nice and damp. And then what you can do is just wrap that around your branch. So you also need two pieces of string to put just down there for the minute. And if I go down here and get the piece of bin bag with the sphagnum, this is the tricky bit, getting it around the join. Now the best way to do it is to go around the back and then just gradually bring it around. Now it's best to have too much sphagnum rather than not enough. You can kind of see the idea here. So I go all the way around and then bring it round to make sure it's nice and tight. If you keep it nice and tight, none should fall out. Now, this is a tricky bit because you have to hold that and then tie the string around. Now, this is usually where you need about three hands because you try to get that around and then you need to tie the knot. Now, when you're up a tree like I am now, uh, this isn't very easy. But what you want to do is Try and tie a knot into the bottom. You could also use wire. Uh, some people use wire. Uh, I find that when you do, it can make it a little bit more difficult to, to get this off. But if you just use string like so, and then tie that nice and tight, just like that, that, that isn't going to go anywhere. And then we can do exactly the same for the top part. Just go around. I've quite a lot of string here, so I might go around twice. Again, ensure that it's nice and tight. And being plastic, you know, there's going to be plenty of humidity and condensation inside that bag. It's going to remain nice and wet. But you don't want too much rain getting in, otherwise it will get sopping wet. And that is that. We'll leave that on there for a few months and hopefully we will get some roots. Well, that was a bit of a climb up and down the tree, but you can see there's one airlayer bag just there on that giant. And there's a dog in the background who also agrees. That's a good idea. <laughs> and uh, you can just see it up on there. There's the other air layer bag just up on that trunk just there, or branch just going upwards. So that was a little bit fiddly. That's the one that I had to put a bit of sphagnum just in the top, uh, just because, wow, it's so tricky climbing up this tree, as you can see. I had to climb all the way up this tree. I uh, quite fiddly doing that, but I put some more moss in the top, and hopefully that should be absolutely fine. So there's one just there, and one just there, and we'll come back to these in uh, say uh, three maybe four months well it's kind of a different project uh, today and oh, i mean air layers are difficult most of the time but yeah to do that to keep on going up and down the tree like that that's uh well that's a hard work uh, let me tell you um but hopefully these air layers do take and if you see any signs of root i will update you all on the channel and of course hopefully the day of uh well reckoning will come where we can cut those branches free from the tree and plant both of these on as new trees and you know, these trunks are around about an inch and a half, maybe two inches thick. So we will have some nice substantial trunks to work with uh, to form a little bonsai tree. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for joining me on this one. And as always, take it easy. Have a great day. And I will catch you on the next one.